what um what pushed you to start your own radio station? Because I saw you doing that, yeah. and you had Nina B co-hosting yeah. at one point. Yeah. And I don't know if you switched co-hosts, but what really pushed you to do your own radio station before Shade Four Five? Um, a lot of you motherfuckers, I want to say, facts. I was the first one on them couches and showing visual when a lot of artists didn't understand why you would do an interview like my my makeup ain't done. Boom, boom, boom. I was one of them. But now, nah, um, just the same thing as doing mixtapes. Niggas wanna let me in, I'ma do it myself. Like parties. You're not gonna you're not gonna hire me for a party, I'ma do it myself. You're not gonna put me on your website, I'ma do it myself. You know what I'm saying? It's just facts, man. I got a website now called Global Hip Hop TV. You know what I'm saying? A, a, a cheaper website for you. You know what I'm saying? To, to get known and let us do our let's let us do the hard work to get you out there. You know what I'm saying? Like just that, just like that whole radio station thing was that, I was like, yo, why, you know, I got a lot of props with artists, but I, it, it gotta be, it has to make sense. You can't just tell an artist to come sit on your couch and it ain't going nowhere. So I had a, I had a London um, radio station hit me and was like, yo, won't you do um, radio with us? And I was like, yo, when I do it even better, when I do an interview with the artist and do that and then put it on the YouTube and do it. And it, it worked, like, you know what I mean? I had all this, you know, it's a difference with Shade 45 and a lot of big radio stations. You know, they, quote unquote, they want the people that's in. Some people, sometimes the people that's not in has the most views. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, I, did, I did an interview with Sean. She had like two million views, like, and I did it from Egypt, you know what I'm saying? Like. Shit like that. I did little mode. I had mad interviews. Like people that they probably would never, you know, interview. And then, you know, I get a showcase for artists. You know what I mean? Up and coming artists where people can see them. You know what I mean? Where that can show that that looks good on your portfolio. You know what I mean? I had French before everybody. You know what I'm saying? Before they I had Machine Gun Kelly before everybody. You know what I mean? Dudes that was coming up was about to get heat and I knew about it. You know what I'm saying? We had um Chief Keith. You know what I mean? Not a great interview, but shout out to Chief Keith. You know what I mean? He's young, but you know, had them dudes, you know what I'm saying? Before anybody even knew about them. That's the type of dudes I'm looking for because, you know what I mean? Those are the type of dudes that, you know, you build relations with. Some people say due to the internet, the mixtape game is kind of getting watered down because now people are breaking records more on the internet and the sites as opposed to mixtapes. How do you plan to continue to stay ahead of the curve in 2012 to beat? Yo, let me tell you something. They're gonna start, they're gonna try to kill the DJ a million times. They got rid of records, they came out with CDJs. They say the DJ ain't important. Mixtapes come from DJs, regardless of nothing. Shout out to the blogs that are putting out music and the, the you know the, the the underground, you know, all the artists are sending it to the blogs and feel like the blogs are you know, quote unquote, the new radio and all that. Mixtapes is always gonna be something. You know what I mean? Like, you can't, you saying like, how does mixtapes water down and you got new mixtapes coming out every day? And people are buying them, or people are downloading them on the internet. But one thing about mixtapes that you gotta understand is that the physical copy might not sell as it used to, but I'm pushing 100,000 100, um, downloads a week. So you tell me. You know what I'm saying? So, mixtapes is never watered down because you gotta understand, when artists, I tell artists all the time, I live in blogs, we all live through the music. You have to continue keeping yourself hot, just like me. DJs feel they name, they're known and their name, nah bro. You stop putting out mixtapes, Superstar J still put, is putting them out, and you're wondering why I'm hot and you're not. I don't give a fuck if you can scratch, take your clothes off, and, you know, and do 80 million scratches, and you're the talentless guy, and I'm a real DJ, I know I hook up speakers to the top and all that. Nobody gives a fuck if nobody knows. You know what I'm saying? But mixtapes, I keep it consistent. I drop, I'm the first nigga, shout out to White Owl. You know what I mean? He was dropping every fucking two days. That's my nigga. But I was said, yo, I can't do all that shit, because that shit, you know, you, you kill the artist music. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm gonna drop every week. I've been dropping every week for the last five years. Facts. Every week. And the reason why people know me was because I was dropping every week, but I was dropping different titles. 
So nobody could could catch me or brand me. So I was like, you know what? I am mixtapes. So I did I am mixtapes part one. Niggas like, yo, you gonna keep that corny name? Nah, I'm gonna keep it going. And then motherfuckers like, yo, where that I am 29 at? Where's the 40 at? Because I branded myself. Assholes, you gotta brand yourself. If you are all everywhere with it, and you're not branding yourself, nobody knows how to brand you. Like, oh, you know what I'm saying? That's what it is. Mixtapes is not watering down. That's just breaking niggas' careers. That's what niggas, when niggas ain't got no bills no more, and they wake up, look at Juicy J. Typical mother, motherfucker, like, that's my nigga. He said, yo, Sony wasn't even calling me. I dropped mad mixtapes, kept on doing mad songs. That nigga said I did bands and make her dance in the bathroom on a fucking hundred dollar mic. Not no big studio. I did that, threw it out, see what happened. Said Billboard called my fucking phone, like, yo, who are you signed to? Next thing, Sony's calling me crazy. And it's going off them $1.5 million. Sony did a season of desist because they had him, his likeness, and signed him for $2 million. Off of one song. Keep on grinding, my nigga. That's it.